I'm going to start this lesson by doing a recap of HTML. I'm using Notepad++. I've made an index.html file and I've saved it on the desktop and I'll be using that for the rest of this lesson. You can, of course, use whatever you want to use, whichever editor you want. So in HTML, we should write the doc type at the top. And this, of course, tells you which version of HTML that you're using. And this doc type is for HTML5. There are other doc types for HTML4, for example. Um, there are so many different versions of that. But we nowadays use HTML5. It's important to put this at the top. Otherwise, your browser can run your code in something called quirks mode and it will not necessarily follow HTML5 so it's important to put that. Next comes the head section and you have to close the head section. A quick recap, this is called an opening tag, this is called a closing tag and under the head is the body the first, the opening tag. We'll put some space there. And then there is the closing tag. Now, when you have something from the opening tag all the way to the closing tag, you call that the element. So this is the body element. And this is the head element. In the head element, it is compulsory to put a title. If you have a head element, you have to put a title. So I'll just call this one um, JavaScript lesson. And save that. And run this. And there you go. This is the page loading up. And there's nothing on there, of course, because I've put nothing in the body. And you can see the title is at the top. And to remind you that this is the basic structure of an HTML page with the doc type and then the head, then the body. And then, of course, within this place, you put in the rest of what you'd want to put in. So if you want to put a header, you put an H1, um, the biggest header, of course, and you can write here something like, uh, let's, let me write studying. And this is, of course, the biggest header that we have. And then you can put a paragraph in here. I like to study. And that's a P, closing the paragraph. And then you save it. And after you save it, we can come here, refresh, press F5, and there it is. I'm going to zoom in to make it bigger so you can see it. And that's the H1, and that's the P. And HTML is rather straightforward compared to a programming language. HTML is a markup language. It's not a programming language in itself. So you can put all the other elements that you know of, the bold and italics and underline and ordered lists and so on. There are so many of them. Now, if we want to use JavaScript, we have to put the script element. So you write script. And of course, if you open if you have an opening tag, you must have closing. Those of you who know HTML know this already. So we have the opening and the closing, and then you will write your JavaScript in here. There are other places that you can write JavaScript. You can put JavaScript into another file, but I'm not going to cover that in this lesson. I just want to cover the basics of JavaScript and get you started with JavaScript. So this is JavaScript. If I save this and I go back here 
and refresh it, it doesn't do anything. If I right click here, view page source, you can see that the JavaScript is there, but there's nothing in the JavaScript. So let's go and put some JavaScript in there. Really simple JavaScript. Maybe the most simple command of all of them is uh, alert. Now JavaScript, before I continue writing, let me tell you, it's a programming language. It's not like HTML where you could get away with making mistakes. Okay, in HTML, if for example, you miss something out, you could get away with making mistakes, meaning the web page will still run. You could, for example, remove that. It's a mistake. It's really not good to do, but it won't make the website crash. It just won't look right. Anyway, in JavaScript, it's a programming language. You must write everything correctly and not have spelling mistakes and so on in the actual language code. So the first thing that we can learn in JavaScript is the alert function. So you write alert and then you put brackets, open and closing brackets, and then in here you write some text. And to write text, you don't just write it like this. You need to put speech marks. So opening speech marks, let's put hello. And in the end of a line of JavaScript, when you have a single line of JavaScript, you put a semicolon. You put semicolons on all lines at the end of every line of JavaScript, you don't do it for blocks of code. That's something I'll come to later on in this lesson. So save this. Now, if I run this code, go back here, press F5, you will see that this hello has shown up in this box. This is the alert box. So it's already got some interactivity with a really simple command, just the alert. So a person can press OK. And then it shows them that page there. Now, in JavaScript, as I said, it's a programming language. You don't want to make mistakes. Example, if I take away this speech mark like this, and if I then save it, and then run the page, press F5, the alert didn't happen. There's no alert, it didn't work. How do we know then that there's a mistake or not, or what the mistake is? The way to do this is if you are using a Windows computer, you can press F12, And here, you'll see this portion showing up here. These are the developer tools. So you then have to click on console. Now you can see there's one error. It says one error. You can click on that. You can click on console. It will show you the same thing. You click on console. There you go. It shows you the error. It says uncaught syntax error invalid or unexpected token. So it's telling you that there is something unexpected, an unexpected token. Click on this. You can click on the link and it will show you exactly where the error is. Okay, it highlights it for you. So there's a problem here. And that's how we can find out if there are any problems with the code. You go to the console there. If you don't have um, F12 on your keyboard or for whatever reason you can't get to it like that, let me close it. You can press close here. What you can do is you can right click on the browser and you can 
click inspect. So right click, let me show you again, right click, click inspect. That brings up the developer tools as well. And then you press console and it shows you the errors that this program has. You click on that and there we are. Here is where the error is. So going back to the code, it said unexpected token. What that means is this was unexpected because you open the brackets, then you write hello, then you should, it's expecting this to be closing. You, it's expecting the string, the speech mark, sorry, to close. This is an opening speech mark and then it should close but instead it found that so that's why it said unexpected token and the more you use JavaScript and other programming languages the more you learn what these uh, error messages actually mean so that is the first and the most basic command in JavaScript it's alert let me show you that you can repeat this you can copy it you can go down and put another one and write bye okay hello bye and put another one how are you now this means that you're doing one alert after another so if i save that and then go back to the web page and reload so first you can see it says hello there then it says bye, then it says how are you, and then it loads the actual page. So you can put commands one after another. That's, that's how programming works. It works in order. One of the first rules of programming is that the program works from the top to the bottom. So alert is a simple command and I'll show you another one, similar one, and that is console, console dot log. Again, same thing as before, you put in what you want to print in here. So I'll just write something random, just some letters, just like that. and run this code and the hello comes up then the bye and the how are you now the console.log doesn't actually show anything on the body of the web page itself it shows it in that console so we can right click inspect go to console and you see there's the text the text which I printed out is there so that's a place where you can print it out and programmers use this console when they are trying to debug and to work things out if they want to work out what's wrong with their program they might print things here or if they want to send a message to another programmer who might run the code and have a look at the console, what's printed out in the console. The console is used as a programming tool, not something that users are supposed to really see unless they really want to. So these two commands are very basic commands to print out things. <clears throat> now, if you don't want the code to run what you can do is comment the code comment in a very simple way is done by putting two forward slashes before the line so I can do that so this is no longer active code that is now something that will not run so if you go back now and check what happens if I refresh this 
you will see it says hello and that's it it doesn't say the other two because I've commented them out comments are actually used by programmers to write explanations so I can put two forward slashes there and I can say the above code will not run so, so this is this is the point of comments if I didn't write this as a comment if I left it like this JavaScript will think this is actually code because this whole section is JavaScript it will try to run this and this is not JavaScript code this is my writing this is English so if you try to run that if I save that and refresh it you can see nothing runs even even this one doesn't work this one doesn't work and the reason they don't work is simply because of this that's causing the problem how can I check again I can go to the developer tools you can press F12 and you go here it's gone to the console straight away unexpected identifier okay click on that there you go it's telling me this is wrong this is the line which is causing the problem so let me close that and go and fix it what I should do is comment it out so now this is a comment this will work now if you go back and run this it works again it's hello and it's working without any problems so that's the basics of getting some output in JavaScript in programming one of the first things that you will learn is the concept of a variable that's among the first lessons output then variables and then the rest of the lessons that come along I'm going to remove this so we don't have too much code here and I'm going to comment this out I don't want this here because I want to write some other type of code that I want to show you so a variable is basically something which stores data data can be someone's name someone's age an address um, the population of a country the speed of a car any piece of data that you need to store you can store in the variable so how do you do this you write V A R that means variable then you write down the name of the variable you need to put a space you can't just write it straight away you need to put a space and you need to say for example age equals 10 so you can say this person's age is 10 whatever the age of any individual is okay var age equals 10 you can make a variable to store something else so you can write var x whatever x is it could be a mathematical thing x equals 5 and that stores that means x equals 5 now we want to for example add age and x so what can we do there we can we can if we want to output it I'm going to use the console.log to do it so I can write console dot log and in here first let me output the age so it's quite simple it will take this age which is 10 and it will print the age I'm going to save that and I'm going to press F5 um, F12 to see the actual console if you want to see the console there you go there's 10 simple now <clears throat> there's a difference you must understand between 
writing age like this, that's a variable. See, if I highlight it, it highlights that one in Notepad++. If, however, I wrote it like this, that will not print what you may think it does. So I'm going to save that. And let me refresh that, leave the console open. So now you see it actually prints the word age. That prints the word age and that is not the same as this variable. That is text. It's actually printing the text. In programming, they use the word string. String means text. Okay, so if you take this away and you just write age, that is a variable and it's printing that there. So I can put here plus and I can put in age again. So what happens now is it takes this age, which is 10, and it adds it to age again. So this is 10 plus 10. It should print out 20. And there you go, it prints out 20. So you can do addition and so on. You could make a variable. So you don't need to. You don't need to write it like this. Age plus age. What I could do is I can make a new variable. Variable result. Now don't put spaces in variables. I mean, it needs to be it needs to be continuous. It cannot have a, a gap. If you if you did that, that's an error. Your program will cause uh, an error to occur and you'd have to go to the console to have a look at what happened like we've done before. So result equals age plus age. And then instead of writing age plus age here, you can write result. Save it, go back, and there you go. There it is, it's 20. And that's how you do mathematics in JavaScript. Now, when you see a variable with a value like x equals 5 or age equals 10, that value can, in fact, change. So what I can do is I can go down here and I can write down age equals 2. So what's happened is the program runs from top to bottom. So this is how it works. Age is 10. X is 5. Age becomes 2. You don't write. You shouldn't. I mean, you, in JavaScript, you get away with it. But in other languages, you won't. Don't create the variable again. Don't write VAR again. Just write the name of the variable, which is age. Now age is 2. It's no longer 10. So when you say result equals age plus age, when you say result equals age plus age, you're doing 2, which is this one. 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2. Not 10 plus 10. So this result here should be 4. So we can save this and have a look at the answer. And there you go, it's 4. This is one of the most important rules of programming, that the program runs from top to bottom and the values of things can change. <clears throat> so let's, let, me, let me show another example of this happening. I'm going to comment all this out. Comment meaning it no longer is code which will run. It's not code at all, in fact. For the browser, it's not considered code. It, the browser will just ignore it. Okay, let's make a variable, x. And x will be, like before, 5. 
and then you write variable y and y will be 3 and then you write x equals x plus 1 okay now you need to work out in your mind what is this going to do <clears throat> so this line you need to think about it it's good to think through things before you actually write the code and if you don't know what you're doing it won't be a good thing you need to think about it plan ahead and then that's how programming is often when I'm programming in fact most of the time if it's a hard problem I'll spend more time thinking than writing the code <clears throat> so it's saying here that x equals x plus 1 so x is 5 if you add 1 to it it becomes 6 so x becomes 6 okay so the value of x is 5 5 plus 1 is 6 you can check this easily by putting in here the x and hopefully it should be a 6 and you can see it's 6 so in programming this concept is called sequence that things move from top to bottom sequence the program follows a sequence this is one of the fundamental if not the most fundamental rule in programming now I'm going to write something here I'm going to write um, I'm gonna in fact I think I should go for other examples and there might be it might be easier than just uh, continuing with this one you can comment out line by line like you've seen me do it before but if you want to comment out a whole block of code all of this there's a quicker way what you do is you write forward slash star and then at the bottom you write star forward slash okay I can do it like that so now this is the whole thing is a comment underneath it of course this is still code that's still JavaScript you can still write here you know the JavaScript that you want to write you can still write your VAR H or whatever so this is a comment you put forward slash star and then star forward slash okay I'm going to write some more code here <clears throat> I'm going to do something else not in test the wrong wrong command var x equals 2 and var y equals 6 x equals y okay x equals y and then console.log I'm going to print out an x and then after printing out the X I'm going to print out the Y this is a question that I ask my students the university level students or even students below university and I ask them and ask the whole class can you answer this question and if they've studied programming before and most of them even though they've done a whole year of programming wherever they've studied cannot get this right and you have to ask what's going on in that case anyway question what does x print what does y print what is the value of x here what is the value of y there students will look at this they'll say oh um, x equals y um, that means uh, 2 plus 6 it's 8 x becomes 8 well there's no plus there they'll say 2 times 6 or 26 x becomes 26 they see this it's a simple thing and they can't answer it this simply means x takes on the value of y 
the one on the left changes, the one on the right doesn't change. Okay, so x becomes whatever y is. x becomes 6. y doesn't change, so simple rule. The one on the left changes. The one on the right doesn't change. I mean, if, if you go back to this example here, this one changes. This is 5 plus 1, 6. So it changes here. But since these are the same thing, you know, this will eventually be changed. When, when that one's changed, it's the same as that. So x becomes 6. Here, <clears throat> that one, that's where the value goes. That's where the value is taken from. To run this, so we're expecting 6 and 6. And there you go. x is 6, y is 6. So that's how you make a variable. But with variables, you don't just store. You don't just store numbers. These are numbers, 2 and 6. You can store letters and words and sentences. So I'm going to comment this out. You can make a variable, VAR to store someone's age. Instead of storing an, a person's age, you could store their name. Okay, now, you cannot just write, let's say the person's name is Bob. You can't just write Bob like that. That's wrong. You can't say the person's name is Bob, and that's if, if I save that and run it, you will see an error. Bob is not defined. That's what it says. Because it thinks Bob is a variable. It thinks that you you have written Bob equals like that. Bob is 9 and and then that's a variable. Now this is 9. Now name now name is Bob. And Bob is nine, so that's that's why. If you if you have to write, if you want to write some data, not a variable, the actual data itself, you put speech marks. That's what you do. You put speech marks there, and now that's right. If I save that, so that that is the data. It's called a string. So, <clears throat> to put it simply, eight is an integer. Integer means a whole number. And Bob is a string. Okay, string, sometimes you'll see they write text. They say it's text. <clears throat> but in most programming languages, when we speak about it, we say it's string. So string means text, by the way. And in these speech marks, you can put anything, you know, you can put all symbols, whatever, you can put anything you want. So that's the person's name. If you want to call your children that, you can put some symbols in there. You can simply do a console.log as you've done it before with name. And that will print, console.log, it will print the name. So if I go here, refresh it and then you can see that's the name is printed there you can here print name and put a plus so let's let's put it back to name of bob because that's sensible name plus age okay now this is like the one here age plus age which is addition but in this case, how are you supposed to add this Bob with 8? It's not. It's not a number. So if you save it, if you have a string, that's a string, and you have a number, and then you try to print it out, it will say Bob 8, because it can't, it can't do addition. It can't do addition, so it just joins them up together. 
if you want to put some space between name and age, you can put, okay, so plus means adding or joining things. You can put a plus. If you put two pluses, that's an error. Let me show you. Well, this is meant to be an error. I know in other languages that's an error. But anyway, let's put here a space. So you're saying here's the name. Join some space to it. And then put the age out there. And there you go. There it is. Now, there are a lot of things that you can learn in JavaScript. This is just the basics. This is simple. And I've made this video just to actually see what kind of response I would get. So I could maybe make a more slower paced, more detailed course explaining things in much more detail. And uh, there's a lot I could even cover with these basic things in terms of explaining to students exactly what's going on and how to program. But I'm going to continue with some other concepts for now. So you can see that there's all this commented code and it's all within the script. You have to start script. That means start JavaScript, end JavaScript. You write all your JavaScript in here. If you were to write this VAR8 at the top, outside JavaScript, VAR, um, let's say a Y equals 4. If you put that there and then save it and then refresh it, that's not JavaScript, that's HTML. It comes out there and it, it doesn't, it's not a programming language, it's just some text. It's just some text that someone can read. You You might be asking, how can you get text onto here. That's something I can show later on using JavaScript. So let's get rid of this. Again, I'm going to I'm going to comment this out. So if we have someone's age, VAR age equals, you want to get that age you want to get that age from user input. You don't want to just write down the person's age is 56. You want to get that age so someone types it in. And hopefully by the end of the lesson we'll cover how to do that. But for now, let's just type the age in. So I've typed in the age 56. So let's say the person later on will type their own age in. What if I want to tell that person if they are an adult or a child, depending on their age? We use in programming something called an if statement, if, if. It's called an if statement. You can't just write if and just leave it. You can't just do that. You have to put the brackets. These are the, these are called just parentheses or brackets. I call them normal brackets when I'm teaching my students. Normal in that they are not square brackets or curly brackets. Okay, so you put if. Then you put a curly bracket. That's called a curly bracket. And then you put another curly bracket to close it. So this is called an if statement. Okay. I'll write some comment here. I'll call this an if, if not id, if statement. <clears throat> That's an if statement and it's not finished. If you were to run that program, this is the whole of the JavaScript. Remember, all the rest is commented out. If you run this program, it should give you an error. Yeah unexpected token. It's saying that closing bracket, if I click on it, that is the error. The error is there. So what's the error? You're meant to put something in here. You're meant to put something in there. What you put in here is either true or false. Okay, let's, let's understand that. You write true. 
it's true or false that's what goes in here in the if statement now what happens is if I put the console dot log in here and uh, just write hello I'm just testing to see if the if statement works if I write hello here press save <clears throat> and run this it prints hello so if true is written there it prints hello if you write false and save it and refresh it it doesn't print that hello okay let's take this console.log copy it Okay, I'm going to write here program finished underneath. Okay, so what this program should do is this program sets the age to 56. Then it checks is there a true here? If there is a true there, print that. Otherwise, it doesn't do this. It doesn't print that. Then it prints this. So, currently, this is false it won't print this it will go straight to that let's run this program this is program finished if I make this true then of course <clears throat> it will print the hello and there you go so the if statement checks is this true or is it false you can't write other stuff you can't just go and write whatever you want and then and then if you if you then gosh if you run it look at that it says it doesn't recognize that it's not defined you can't just write anything you have to write true true or false but you can write something which checks, which, which results in true or false. Okay, so you can. What you can do is you can say if age is greater than, that's the greater than, 17. Okay, look at that. That's 56. Is that age greater than 17? Is this true? Or is it false? And obviously we know age is greater than 17, so it prints hello. So this is this results in true. There you go, hello. If then I were to make the age six, this is no longer true. So it just prints that and nothing else. So this here instead of writing true I mean hello I can write adult so that's what you do you check if the age is greater than 17 the person's an adult okay you can then in an if statement you can write the you can write else like that put the curly bracket if you open a bracket remember always you close a bracket in programming I don't think I've ever seen a case where you open a bracket and you don't close it and then what we'll do here is we'll copy this and write child so this is quite simple if this is true it will print adult if this is false it will print child so six here six six is it greater than 17 no it's not it's false so it should print child let's save that refresh it that prints child so now whatever this is will determine what's printed and that's basic very basic programming what we want to do now is to get this six from the user and uh, not actually write it ourselves so in order to get this number from the user what we should do is put some kind of text box here 
and put a button there and that's how we should do it so that's something that has to be done in HTML so under I like studying I'll put for those of you who know this BR means make a new line and I'll put here a text box so I'll write here input type equals text okay input type equals text and save that let's see if it shows up and there's a text box there you can see there's a text box and let's put a button <clears throat> I'll write a button here button and write the word submit or press or whatever you want to write and that should make a button and there you go the buttons there as you know if there's no BR if there's no BR it ends up on the same line and for P and H1 it's a different issue for those who, who know HTML so you can click on this button button doesn't do anything somehow we need the button to actually do something to get this button to work we have to do something called event handling and there are many ways of doing this the simplest way is the following you go to the button and in the opening tag now this is called as I said event handling you write the word on click on click okay on click it's one word you write on click equals and then you put the speech marks opening and closing and in here in this on click you can actually write you can actually write some JavaScript code I think okay I was gonna say this is hard to read but I'm, I'm gonna continue for now we can write for example you can write something like console dot log okay so this is code you already recognize console dot log and you know in the console dot log you need to put some kind of you need to put some kind of text in there but this time you don't put in you don't put double quotes you put single quotes okay, you put single quotes the reason being because outside you have one double quote opening which closes here if you had put a double quote there it would think it's opening here and closing there what you should do is put single quotes instead you can even do single quotes here it's fine it works in JavaScript you don't have to use double quotes so let's put console.log here and put in like by or something like that so what this means is when someone clicks the button it will do a console.log and it will print by so you you're writing exactly JavaScript this JavaScript there you're just writing it let me delete that cut it so you can have a look some reason okay there you go you writing it in the on click okay inside here so let me put that back in there and there you go you can see console.log and that's what will happen so save this refresh it so you press submit and there you go it's a buy and click it as many times as you want and you can see it prints it it says four five six in the old days <clears throat> it would have printed by down every time you pr pressed it it would have printed by down there okay so what you can do is you can write JavaScript in here you can write it in there but who's going to do that right like 
10 lines or 20 or a thousand lines of JavaScript in this section. So we don't want to write any JavaScript, a long portion of JavaScript. We don't want to do that there. What we want to do instead is make a function. Okay, a function is a piece of code which doesn't run unless you call it. Okay, so what does calling it mean? Well, so let's do this. We're going to write here function. I'm going to write the word function and then I'm going to write the name of the function. So let's say the name of the function is check age. Age A is capital because if you write check age like that, it looks like one word. If you make it that, it looks like two words. You're not allowed to put spaces like variables. You can't put spaces. You put check age. You put brackets and then you put the curly brackets. OK, remember, I told you, you need to put semicolon at the end of one line, but not when you have curly brackets. That's when you don't put semicolon like this. So you have this check age. This is a function. I can take all this code all of it and shift it into the function there you go so now all the code that I just wrote for checking the age is inside the function now this doesn't run if I go now and refresh it you can see it didn't run look at here it doesn't run at all this check age this whole block all this doesn't run unless you call it now how do you call it call you write the name of the function so the function is check age you put the brackets just like this that's the function and then you put semicolon so what this means is if you write this, it is going to run this. Okay, this is called calling a function. Okay, let me save it and come back. And then there you go. Now it runs. Program finished. You can call a function as many times as you want. So I can copy that. This is this is the advantage of functions. I'm going to call the function four times. So it's going to run this piece of code four times. And look at this. It runs it four times. That's a function. Functions allow you to call the code again and again. Let me delete that, take it away. I'm going to comment this out. What I want to do is I want to call the function check age in here on the on click okay so you say when the button is clicked you write some javascript and the only javascript i'll write is that you save that come back here so this time it's not going to run because i i'm not calling it here's the function rather it will run when you press the click there you go look at that every time you click on it it runs that javascript okay now so that's great we got the button working the button runs a function what do i do now i want to get the text six the number six from <clears throat> here i don't want to get it from i don't want to put it i don't want someone to write it there I need to get it from the box, the input box. This is the input box. Now, what you do is you give the input box an ID. Okay. You write ID equals speech marks. Let's call it age box. Okay, so this is the age box. This is the ID. As you know, in CSS, you have IDs and you have classes as well. So it's the same concept. 
that this text box here has an ID and the ID that I've given it is age box. You can only give it one ID. You're not allowed to give it two or three IDs. So it's like if you're in school, you may have an ID. If you have your um, passport, it has an ID number and all that. It's the same concept. You have an, you have an identifier. And that means this box here has an ID and that ID is age box. Now what I want to do, what I want to do is this. I want to go down here and say the age comes from this input box. So you write document. Now I can't explain all this in detail because of the length of the video. It's a short video and it requires more explanation but in programming you sometimes don't need to understand everything and I've been doing it for 20 years and I can tell you that's a fact as long as you understand what you need to you can make use of it but it's good to understand things of course you write document so the age equals document dot get element look at the way I've spelled element I've put a capital E get element by capital by B I D okay document dot get element by ID put in brackets and in the brackets put in the ID that we put up there so you put this here so you're saying from the whole document from this web page find an element which is called age box so it finds it and from age box get the value of what was written in there so you write val you and then you put a semicolon okay so this means the age will be what a person writes in this text box so from the document this code is saying from the whole page get the element which has this ID age box and get the value dot value means get the value inside that text box so if someone wrote in here 25 that's the value dot value means get the value inside so you get the value and it's a single line so you need to put a semicolon you get the value and you store the value inside age then it will check is the age over 17 or is it not and then this program finished um, I don't think we need this that was only there for the sake of me teaching a certain principle earlier so save this and then we must test this code so I'm going to refresh this refresh it every time in JavaScript you must refresh it let's put in here 12 press submit so it says child put 63 press submit it says adult okay do it again it's an adult again put in here 23 press submit that's an adult of course put in 2 and press submit and it's a child so you can see from this what kind of things we can do with JavaScript and this is just the very basics in my opinion when you learn to program you should learn to program properly which doesn't mean learning to code there's a fad nowadays that you learn to code and you, that makes your program no you need to understand it in depth everything in depth and that's how programming should be taught in my view and how it should be understood and what I covered today may seem to have depth but it doesn't actually have the depth of explaining everything but that may be for another time thank you for listening 
In this video, I'm going to show you how to put data into a text field rather than just obtaining it from the text field. You will notice that this video and the ones that follow it are actually a lot shorter than the first one. And that is because I didn't know that I had to upload at least five videos before they the whole course would be approved. So my intention was just to have the one video. Now I'm adding these other ones to make up for the low number. So if you remember, in the last lesson, I did the following. You put the age in there. And when you press submit, it tells you whether the person is an adult or a child. But you need to have a look at the developer tools, you press the right click and then inspect, or you press F12. And there you go, there's adult there. And if you put in one and it prints child. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a text box below here. And when you press submit, it won't print it here, adult or child, it will print it here. In fact, we can have them printing in both places at the same time. So going back to the code, and this is the code that was there. So what happened here is you get the data, you get the age from age box, which was that text field, and then, which is this text field, and then if the age is, you check if the age is over 17, you write something in the console. But let's instead put a, another text field, this time underneath. So, I'll put a BR and do the same thing as before. Input type equals text. And there's no closing for text fields. There's no closing input. It's just one tag one tag. The whole element is made of one tag. Now in this one, id, I can write the id equals, let's put id equals result box. Okay, so this is where the result will go. Save that, go back here and refresh, and there you see it. Here it is. So the idea is I'll put it in there, press submit, and it'll end up in here. It's, if you understand programming, working out things like this is actually not hard because you will look at code like that and say, well, here is how we obtain data. Maybe to put data in, it's very similar to put data into a text field. So let's copy that and put it in here. So this means that the console will show adult and what we can do is we can say document, document meaning the whole web page, find the element, find the element which is result box, the new one, this one here. Find result box, the new one. And you don't get the value. What you do is you write value equals adult. And that's it. And there it is. You do you do the same thing down here. So now it gets the data from one text box or text field, in fact, and then puts it into another one. We should always test it. When you program, you write a bit of code, you test it. You don't write a thousand lines or even 20, 30 lines, especially if you're a beginner, and then expect it to work. You write a little bit, and then you test it, and then you write a bit more, and that's how it's done. <coughs> okay, so here I'm going to put in 45. And uh, there, it says adult. And if I put in 12, it says child. And that works perfectly. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to not put it into a text field because a text field 
someone can overwrite it. Maybe you want to put it into a uh, a paragraph or a div or something along those lines, some text down there. This time, I want to add the result here. The output should be here, not there. So when you press submit the child, it should say it there. We can leave this text field in here, but let's have something else added there. Now I'm going to use a div. So I'm going to put a div in here. Going back to the HTML code, underneath that underneath that text field, put in a break and then put in a div and close the div. And if you save that, of course, there will be nothing in here. There'll be nothing there because you haven't written anything. You can write here the result will appear here. The result will appear here and we can then put the result there. Now it is similar, very similar to the way in which you put the result into the text field. You need to give it an ID and the ID doesn't go here. It always goes there. If you remember CSS, if you know CSS, you would know that. ID equals. And then you can put the ID in there and we can call this, well, we have result box. Let's call this result div. Okay, so this one is result div. The ID of this div is result div. Save it. Now, what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to, it's going to be very similar to this line. I'm going to write here document dot get element by ID and then the brackets and then put in the element that I want to access. So this allows me, this allows the code to access an element in the page. So this is result div, it's that one. It's that one there, so you should write result div. And then result div, now you don't write dot value you write, there's only one difference between putting it into a text box and putting it into a normal HTML element, like a paragraph or a bold element or an underline or a span. And the difference is this, you write dot inner HTML. So that's the difference. Value is for text boxes, password boxes and for other form type, the things that appear on forms, on HTML forms, this is for the other elements that you see. So inner HTML equals adult. So I'm going to save this. Now I could write the same thing down here for the child, but it's always good in programming to do it a bit at a time. In case you get it wrong and then you have to rub it out in two places or delete it and rewrite it. So let me refresh that. Now this time I'll put in 19. I was going to put in the child one and it wouldn't appear because there's no code for the child. And there you go. This time it prints it not in a text box. It's in a div. This is a div. If you put something smaller, one, See that? It doesn't change what's already there. I didn't write down that if it's a child, delete what's written there. It just leaves it.
That's how it works with the if statement. That if it is over 17, write adult. If it's less than 17 or equal to 17, it doesn't do anything. So whatever's there already will remain there. It won't delete it. People think, students think, oh, it must do the opposite. No, you have to program everything. In programming, you have to tell the computer what you want it to do. It can't work out what you want it to do. So all we do is we change that to child. And press save and refresh. And this time, if you put 45 and you put in 2, you can see that's what happens. Now, if you want, you can get rid of this text box. So you could come up here and delete the text box. You could just remove it. If you did this, however, you will end up with an error because if you delete this text box, you have to delete all lines which refer to it. So you'd have to come here and also delete this line because this line is res is looking for the text box. It's looking for result box. Okay, it's looking. This line is looking for the result box. So if you delete it up there, you need to delete this line as well. If you didn't, you would see the error happening. In the last lesson, I showed you how you can put the output into a div and that's down there so you can put a number there press submit and it puts the result there now in this lesson I want to show you how you can use JavaScript to change the CSS for those of you who know what CSS is it's a way of styling the HTML of adding color of changing the font size and so on. This can be done in JavaScript as well. And it's actually quite straightforward. Now what I'm going to do is if the person's an adult, this should be blue. And if the person is a child, that will be red. And that's going to be done in the same place. So what we do is we want to change this div here. Now remember this div is uh, if you go to the code you remember the div is actually called result div. This is the name of the div. It's up here. Result div. Now I'm not putting text in the div. In the last lesson, it was inner HTML. Inner HTML means this part here, the inner, the inner part of the div. That's what inner HTML means. I, I can put, we can put values in there. Rather, we want to change the style of the div this time around. So, we go to this and we write document. In fact, you, you can copy this part here. Document dot get element by ID result div. Now not inner HTML. This time you write dot style because you're changing the style of it, the color of it. You write dot style and then you write a CSS property. Okay, so you write dot style dot whatever CSS property you want to change. So let's search for this. Write down CSS properties. And here's a, a result from a search engine. And you can see there's a long list of properties. So we can choose these properties and we can change them. I'm going to go for the easiest one to change. And that is color. So color, 
I'll click that and open it here. <clears throat> and you can see here in this famous website, W3Schools, that you can set the color by writing the color red. And that's how it's done in CSS. It's very similar in JavaScript. So we, once we know what the property is that we want to change, we can then write the name of the property here. So I can write color. And then I can write equals, same, same thing as what you see up here. Equals, and then you put the value, you put the value of the color. Blue semicolon remember semicolon it's one line of code it's not a block when you have a block remember you need to put the this these curly brackets anyway so i'm going to i'm going to save this now i'm going to go back to this and refresh it i'm going to put 11 it doesn't change the color i haven't written the code for that let me put 78, submit, and there you can see it's blue. If I go back and put 11, it's going to stay as blue because I didn't change the color. So we can go back here, copy this line, which changed it to blue, and come down here and quite simply write red. So it's a case of if the age is over 17, do these things, else do this and save that. Refresh it. Now if I put 11, see it's red. And if I put 45, it's blue. And it works every time. So you, that's how you change CSS using JavaScript. You can do this with any property. So let's have a look at the other properties. I'm going to go for one more. So there was color. Now another famous one, and you can do any of these, is background color. So there's background color. Background color is two words, background and color. This is how you write it in CSS, background hyphen color. In JavaScript, when you have a hyphen, you remove it and you make the second letter, the second word, sorry, start with a capital. So let's do the same thing as was done previously. I'm going to make this code a bit smaller because it's going to get longer. Although I fear that this is maybe too small for a mobile phone. That should be okay. So I'm going to copy all that. <clears throat> now this time, remember the program runs in sequence. First it does this, then it does that, and then that, and then this one, and then this one. So you can change each style one by one. Background color. Just write background. But you don't put, like I said, you don't put the hyphen. Look here, the editor is showing me this as a suggestion, put hyphen. This is CSS, don't do that. You you join the words up and make the second word start with a capital. And we shouldn't make the background color blue because if you make it blue, then the foreground is blue, then you can't see the foreground. Let's put here, I guess, um, yellow and copy this and do the same thing down here so make this one green red and green blue and yellow save it and come back to this and then type in 12 and there you can see if I take this away <laughs> the div goes all the way across the screen it's called a block element these are called 
um, inline elements. This is a block element as well. If you change the background of that, the header, it goes all the way across the screen. And so is the paragraph. Paragraph is a block, it goes all the way across the screen. These ones are called inline. They don't go all the way across. You need to put a BR to break if you want anything else. So, 36. And it works perfectly. Now, you can, as I said, do this with any CSS property. You can have a look at any of these. Background image, you can put a capital I, no hyphen. Background size, border, border collapse, any of them. If you know your CSS, you can do it in JavaScript. Very easy thing. You just press a button and it does it. So what you could do is you can make a button, a separate button. So you can make another button here, put a button there, and that button calls another function. So this one is calling check age. You can make a new function, call it whatever you want. So function A, for example. And in this function, you could write a line like this. A line like this or like this. And so when someone presses another button, it might change the color of the heading. Or it might resize it. Or you can animate it. You can press a button and there's a way to get it animating. So it's not just going from one color to another immediately it goes through an animation, a number of transitions. If you are a university student studying computer science or software engineering, you will notice that there are a lot of students who struggle with programming. I remember when I was studying computer science, the vast majority of students that I was with couldn't program. And some of these were brilliant students in all other ways. They would get straight A's in everything else. They were people who, when they did their A-levels, for those of you who don't know, in Britain, A-levels are considered the gold standard of um, qualifications prior to going into university. These were people who got all A grades and in university they couldn't do it. They couldn't program. And I remember once speaking to one of the lecturers at university and she asked me, what are you good at? And I said, I'm good at programming. And she said, for employers, that's like gold dust. A student who can program. So there is all this encouragement for people to learn how to code and there are so many courses available and you might walk away thinking you have knowledge and if you are one of those skilled people and there are people like this who can pick it up quickly really quickly within days they can understand how to program within days um, what would take other people literally months or years and I've, I've seen this myself, people who will do a whole degree for three years and they know less than what someone who learnt in one week learnt because programming is not about knowledge. It's about your brain working in a certain way. It's not about gaining a lot of information. It's not like learning... A human language. When you learn one of these human languages like French or German or English, you have to learn a lot of things. In programming there's not much actually that needs to be learnt. It's all about having principles in your mind and it's about how you think. It's all about thinking. Thinking the right way. It's a skill. Okay, it's a skill. It's like if you learn a sport, let's say you, you learn how to throw a ball, that's a skill. Your body has to learn that. Some people just have it and they get it quickly. 
And I don't think it's such a hard skill to develop. So <clears throat> if you have tried to program a real project, you will see it's not easy. I mean, if people want to take some code off the internet and adapt it and think they know how to program, that's not programming. When you have a bug in your program or where you, when you want to in create something new, that's programming. So if you go on the internet, and I've got a search engine here, if I write, why can't programmers why can't programmers program? Okay, so this is why can't programmers program. The first link, the first hit, famous coding website, Coding Horror. Um, programming isn't that bad, actually. There, there have many advantages. It's not all such a bad thing. So here, a person who talks about interviewing candidates for jobs says that 199 out of 200 applicants for every programming job can't write code at all. I'm not going to say programmers can't program. I'm going to say people who've studied it can't do it. And I was in fact speaking to someone from Google who worked in Google. Uh, and he said to me that most of the work is done, and this is, think about it, this is Google of all places, most of the work is done by 20% of the people there, of the coders. 80% of the work, he said, is done by 20% of the people. I've spoken to employers from other companies who tell me they really struggle to find people who can program. And why is that? And if you have a look at this article, you will see that there are some really easy questions which these applicants for jobs are given, and they can't answer them. They can't write solutions for this code. And there has to be a reason for it. Like it says here, I've discovered that people who struggle to code don't just struggle on big problems or even smallish problems, they struggle with tiny problems. You might be a straight grade A student and you struggle with tiny problems. Uh, an example here is of a program. Write a program that prints the, the numbers from 1 to 100. Okay, write a program that prints the numbers of from 1 to 100 but for multiples of 3, print fizz instead of the number. And for multiples of 5, print buzz. It's really easy. And uh, it says here that most good programmers should be able to write out on paper a program which does this in under a couple of minutes. Yeah, easily. You can do this in under a couple of minutes. I would say even less than that. I would say even less than that, maybe uh, 30 seconds or one minute. The majority of computer science graduates can't. I've also seen self-proclaimed senior programmers take more than 10 to 15 minutes to write a solution. Uh, that's scary. <laughs> it's scary hearing things like that and how people in this world get away with uh, not having knowledge and somehow ending up with uh, certain places and positions where you don't really know but you ended up in management because you weren't good enough for the actual work. Anyhow, why is it that people can't program? I've put down a list of four things from my experience. Cause I'm a lecturer who's trying to make a difference in, in this area. The first is they don't really no programming. So I put down a lack of real understanding. They can't understand programming or they haven't understood it. Some people get it straight away. These other people who don't get it, they need to be taught it and they need to be taught every single aspect of it. They need to be taught in ways where they don't have misunderstandings because you can teach someone something, they think they know it, and they don't know it, and then you have to teach them, you need to correct them and show them, actually, you don't really know it. So 
it's a case of teaching. This is really lacking in programming courses that I've heard of people going to, people tell me. And I'll admit in this short course that I've just uh, done, I didn't teach in the way that I normally teach in the classroom with setting a task for a student, with asking them, did you understand, explain it to me, answer this question and like having a discussion with them, making them do small tasks bit by bit, small tasks over and over again and building up their skills like you build up the skills of an athlete, of a sports person. So they don't really understand what they're doing. They just learned code. They didn't learn programming. And some programming teachers go way over the top in in detail. I mean, they go so fast and they explain certain things which is irrelevant. You don't need to explain so much. Stick to, stick to the fundamentals and explain that very well. Second thing... A lack of imagination, visualization. You do not just look at the code. You need to visualize what's happening. If you study a subject like data structures and algorithms, visualize. There's a need to visualize what's happening. This is a skill in itself, and this can also be taught. You have to have a powerful imagination. I remember when I was studying physics, and I was really bad at physics, and then I became good. And it was because I understood I shouldn't look at the equations as equations. I should visualize what the equations represent. So if I'm studying the laws of motion, I need to visualize the planets orbiting the sun, for example. I need to visualize a ball being dropped from somewhere and actually visualize what's going on rather than just looking at the equations so that's the second thing. You need a strong visual mind. A lack of creative problem solving. Now this is hard. Basically a lack of creativity. But what I've noticed is this can also be learnt. Rather than taught, learnt, because if you want to teach it, you'll have to put a huge amount of effort. Over, year, over the years, people can learn from examples. They can learn from examples of problems that were solved or problems that they solved in the past and apply the same solutions. Secondly, they need a very active mind. If you have a mind which studies many subjects, many areas, a mind which is inquisitive, always trying to work things out. I have a student who is a brilliant programmer and he tells me that when he was a child, he would break everything. His parents would buy him toys and he would break it apart and see how it's made. You need that kind of mind. Always trying to find out what things, how things are. Always being curious. An example, if you're talking to someone, you don't just talk to someone. You ask yourself, why is this person thinking in that way? So that's an interest in psychology as an example. Okay, If you're walking down the street, you don't just just walk down the street, you might look around and say, well, this has been designed in this way. Why is it like that? If you have that kind of mind which jumps around a lot and is also able to be focused when it needs to be, that gives you creative thinking. A mind that can jump around and not just ignore things, interesting things in life. This one is a major one, the last one. And this is something that can be taught but it's not really taught for some reason how do you debug how do you work out how there are bugs in your programs and there are certain techniques i would say of all these things the last one is the one that can make the biggest difference for students i think this can make a huge difference because you can write if you lack in these other things if you lack in the first three but you're strong at debugging, you will end up fixing the problems anyway. So you make a program, it doesn't quite do what it should do, but you know how to debug. Okay, so you can you can use print statements to debug, you can isolate the code to debug, you can use a debugging tool. I would recommend learning the first two things, and then after that, using a debugger. 
and that would help you solve the problems. And I think these are the four reasons why people are not good at programming can become good at it. And I've seen people becoming good at programming with some effort.